Welcome guys to another reaction here. Today we are watching one of the most legendary runs ever done of Spyro 1 and I don't say that lightly. Uh, the any percent record has been broken several times in the last few days and we hope to see it get broken even more but what we have here in front of us is the latest 37 gotten in Spyro 1 any percent, a category that historically has been fought hard tooth and nail to really incorporate as many difficult end game skips as possible to reach the 37 and now we're finally at a point where the 37 is starting to get optimized so i wanted to react to this run and talk a little bit about it from a runner's perspective and why some of the strats uh, ash does are so badass why they're so smart maybe not always the most optimal um but also like allowing uh them to get the best time possible. Uh, again, this is Ash R E L, which uh, you can uh, see their channel linked down below in the description. But without further ado, let's get into this legendary run and see what makes this such a legendary run. So yeah, as, uh, as I mentioned just a second ago, um, it's mostly Ash's uh, voice on this recording. Uh, they uh, have been running any percent mostly for I got it. What, what's the time? Ash is in my chat right now, by the way. So big shout out to Ash for letting me do this reaction. But uh, we can get my banana going here. The run starting with the dragon and then going into Stone Hill. Love that flame charge right there. Very classic. Uh, Stone Hill actually has the most dragons in the artisan homeworld. So um, you're going to see a lot of kind of bolting between. Um, uh, multiple dragons and then going to uh, mostly going for blue gems. There's actually a, a high density of blue gems in this level, which the routing for this level kind of uh, revolves around. So a lot of you guys are used to watching me play 120%, but uh, this category is any percent. And to those of you who don't know the difference, any percent just means complete the game as quickly as possible with the minimum requirements from the balloonist, which notably are 6,000 gems from the uh, Dreamweaver's world and 50 dragons from the Beastmaker's world. Uh, in 120%, uh, we collect all 14,000 gems. So that's a big difference in gems, which allows us to skip a lot of the gems and dragons throughout the run. Um, however, as routing has gotten more optimized over the years, uh, we've come to this sort of conclusion that it's like a real sort of a teeter-tottering game that you play with, uh, skipping gems and skipping certain things in order to make your actual routing faster. So we are trying to skip certain gems, but we're really aiming for like the higher value ones. But with that said, with that said, there is definitely more optimal routing that can be technically done, but is not done in favor of giving ourselves a buffer of gems. Notably, in the last level of Dreamweavers, before you have to, you know, check for the 6,000 gems to go on to Nasty's world, the last level of Dreamweavers, Jock, has, um, I'm just gonna turn the voice down here a little bit until we hear some notable stuff. And by the way, if Ash wants to give uh, any, uh, you know, insight onto what they were talking about here, um, feel free to let me know in the chat. There's Ash right there. Um, so if you want me to turn up and listen to anything, feel free to just let me know. I'll try to be paying attention to the chat here. But uh, yeah, so with this routing, we actually don't necessarily want to do the most strict gem routing or like try to make it as tight as possible because the reality is, is you are going to miss certain gems and even if you do a tight gem route really well, you're still going to end up having to recover a certain amount of gems in Jock, basically negating the amount of time you would have saved otherwise. So there's a real balancing act to be played in terms of what gems you're going for as well as uh, what... Um, I guess what gems you're not going for, I guess is another way to say it. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting category in terms of routing in that way that you don't see in 120% where we're just collecting everything. It's in a lot of ways, 120%, the category that I play is a lot more mindless compared to this category. In this category, you're definitely thinking about how many gems you are over or under compared to like the route that you're trying to go for basically. Uh, it's all about the gems, and so even with that guy right there, I, I think Ash missed that guy right there. That's like two gems. You have to like know that and be like, okay, two gems, okay, we're good. But you know, you're kind of taking account of that. Um, and so there does, there is a little bit more memorization that goes into these gem counts uh, in between levels. And it's like Ash is looking at that. Ash is looking at that and being like, oh, okay, all right, we're good. We're under by this many and over by this many. Fun fact with uh, my any percent runs, by the way, amazing strat right here. Ash was going for a little uh, proxy coming back inbounds, I think. Uh, there's like a little roll strat that Chris came up with to get up that area. Uh, so I think that might have been what Ash was going for, but perhaps uh, they have since optimized it since my days. Keep in mind that a lot of the strats I'm going to be referencing are from about two years ago, back when I last ran this category. So if anything is outdated or Ash is doing something that I said like the wrong way, you know, it's like take take what I say with a grain of salt. I am an old veteran salty runner here. So yeah, but that's Artisan's very quick home world. Only three minutes down and I am covering up the splits right here. But yeah, we are at 347 right now. Um, 
The actual artisan split at 340 is really good. You want to be 340, even just barely sub 340 is ideal, especially with collecting as many gems as Ash has. One thing that we found, I think, uh, and I think Ash and Lore can attest to this, is that in the spirit of making gem routing a little tighter, uh, we do go for a little, a few more gems in the early game, uh, like in artisans as well as uh, peacekeepers, than is technically necessary. Um, a, to give ourselves a buffer. Uh, and B, to allow ourselves to go for like more risky strats later on in the run. And speaking of risky strats, uh, this is gonna be the first level where we see uh, what we'd call like a run killing uh, trick. Peacekeepers has three tricks in it that basically uh, can make or break uh, your run by, you know, dozens of seconds each. Uh, and in this level, it's gonna be a tight uh, charge glide to make it to the key area early. Uh, I'll be pointing that out when we get there. But for now, we're just collecting stuff and just grabbing dragons. And Ash is very chill right now. I think Ash, uh, Ash, do you listen to music while you play? I'm, I'm like genuinely curious. I see the headphones in, but you might just be listening to the game sound. I know a lot of uh, non-120 runners, like you know, especially with Vortex. You, in case you guys don't know, Ash was is actually a top-level player in Vortex as well, which is a category all unto itself with its own history. If you haven't seen it, check out Hummeldon's video down below. If you haven't, if you don't know about it, but uh, a lot of people here who are familiar with Spiral One speedruns are familiar with Vortex. And Ash is basically like a top whatever, top three, top whatever runner in that. So, and that's that's no, that's the jump right there. You see that glide to get to this area? You're supposed to glide from all the way around the other side of the level, but Ash, there's just barely enough room to make that uh, glide right there. So that's the first difficult strat gotten. And if you're not even paying attention to that, see how I just kind of glossed over it? If you're not looking for little strats like that, you know, it's hard to appreciate how hard some of these jumps are. You have to perfectly conserve Spyro's momentum off the ledge without getting too stopped up by like the wall that's right there, you know, when you're doing it. It's a particularly weird jump for how you can extend his momentum off the ledge properly before going for an optimal charge glide. Yeah, so part of the reason why we don't have game sound here is because um, you can see that Ash had uh, music playing in their ears. Which, you know, for me... Oh, here's a big trick right here. Mama proxy, you squeeze between the mama and the wall and then climb up this. Uh, this surface here causes you to roll, similarly to like the slide, the slipping off mechanic. But if you hold X there, um, you can just jump up that. And then this allows for a much uh, a much faster and higher gem route in this level. Um, basically going straight to the dragons and all the high value gems. The Mama prox Proxy route. Interestingly, there is, um, there is a reasonable debate that a, a Mama Proxy route could be uh, faster in 120% as well. Though I have played with it a little bit. It's hard to justify it considering how awkward it is <laughs> compared to the normal 120 route. But I guess that's just me being a little baby. But yeah, we're just getting to uh, finishing the rest of the level and then I believe exiting out the vortex. If you didn't do this Mama Proxy route, you'd have to do the whole glide across the ravine and everything to collect all those gems. Yeah, there's a no game sound route. And so there's like, there's an interesting discussion to be had about the use of game sound in this game because um, technically you don't need it, especially if you don't play 120%. Uh, the only things you would... Uh, let me Let me rephrase this. Game sound is not needed, but it is helpful for sound cues from the gems as well as from fireworks. For example, in this level, there's like those fireworks that you could like, you know, flame. And it's really hard to see them, especially when you're just trying to charge past everything. It's hard to see whether you've actually hit one or not. It has a really tiny sizzle and like, like as if we're going to stand there and watch to see that. We're going to keep moving, right? So here is, uh, we're, so there's like our first like kind of gem miss right there. We, there might've been some other gem misses that I haven't noticed, but Ash would have really liked to get um, at least one of the greens from one of the other guys, as well as that blue there. I'm sure Ash was not happy with that missed blue uh, right there, but uh, overall the gem count still seems pretty solid. Um, I, again, I haven't run this category in like two years, so I don't know the exact numbers that they should be at. Uh, so if Ash here in the chat wants to kind of clue me into like uh, their mindset or what they're thinking gem wise, especially, um, or just how they're feeling, like it, it would go a long way. But uh, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, game sound is, it's like an important thing I think in speedrunning this game because uh, there have been a lot of situations. Now I will say in 120% it is more important because you do have to collect every gem and so you want to be able to hear every gem um, to that end as, as well as the fireworks and stuff that Ash skipped in Clifftown, you know, for this run, but I would have gotten in 120%. So in categories like any percent in Vortex, it is definitely more viable to use uh, music. This is another one of those. Look how close that glide is. I mean, that is just insane how tight that glide is. 
Like, absolutely ridiculous. There's a little thief skip right there going for the uh, flame charge jump on him. Ash, Ash actually got the, um, the flop on him, which is kind of like a frame-perfect jump right as you hit him for the flop, which is still a, a time save compared to uh, not going for that at all. And now we're going to Night Flight. Now, you may be wondering, like, why do the flight levels if we're just trying to get through the game as quickly as possible? I mean, they don't give you any dragons or eggs or anything. Well, as it turns out, flight levels actually give you as many gems per second as any of the optimal routes in this game do, and even more so for levels that aren't Sunny Flight. So we did skip Sunny Flight in this run, but that is going to be the only flight level that we skip in this game. It's just necessary for the amount of gems that are required to exit uh, Dreamweavers. It brings us to an interesting topic about gems per second, which is an, which is an important concept in this run. Um, the way we route things in this uh, category basically revolves around how many gems are we getting per second. So if there's a long stretch where you're not collecting anything, like for example, these flight levels, we're not technically collecting any gems right now, but you do get a lump sum of 300 at the end. Oh, unfortunate uh, box miss right there, but that's only about four seconds, three, four seconds. And Ash recovered it nicely, so not the end of the world, but... You know, when you have a world record run, and like, I'm sure Ash can attest to this, little things like that, especially like the obvious quote unquote mistakes like that, those hurt extra when it's like world record. For, if for my previous any percent record, I missed Mama Proxy for a 15 second time loss. And so I constantly live in the shadow of that mistake, you know, whereas I could I could have a time like this, you know, but alas, right? It's, al it's always like coulda, shoulda, woulda in speedrunning, and you have to just kind of take the W we're never gonna play the game perfectly. It's like that, that's kind of the whole thing. It like teaches you a lot about like life in, in that way, I guess. This PK is slow. This PK is slow, but I mean like everything movement wise seems good to me. Like, and I'm not talking like micro optimization, like the perfect line. This is another interesting difference between Vortex slash any percent runners and myself with 120% is that there's a lot more emphasis, especially in a category like Vortex, that you're taking optimal racing lines. So even though that one mistake in Night Flight of like the missed box is like, okay, well, it's a slow Peacekeepers now. Um, Ash could also be referring to like just the general racing lines as in like cutting corners and going from point A to point B, going from gem to gem, from target to target in the optimal fashion, you know, which is, that can be a harder thing to see when you're just watching a run. Like if you see like a suboptimal racing lines versus optimal racing lines, it. It's, it's just hard to, to discern that sometimes, even for more experienced players like myself. It's like, there's a lot of, to that end, there's a lot of invisible time save in the racing lines in this game. And Ash is, is keenly aware of that, uh, you know, being a vortex and any percent runner. Oh, Ash did some gem recovery there, apparently. Thank goodness we have Ash here for the, um, for the reaction. So there was some recovery for uh, some of the earlier missed blues that are, that's happening in this level. So that's cool. Of course, causing more, incurring more time loss, but allowing us to save more time when we get to jock. So remember that anytime we, we, anytime we take a hit on gems or we recover gems, sure, it's a time loss in the moment, but it's keenly calculated. So that way uh, you don't lose more time in jock. Because that, again, that's the final level before the end of Dreamweavers, and it could either save you a lot of time, or it could lose you a lot of time, depending on your gem count going into that level. Which, again, is the reason why we don't want to really be too over-optimal, you know, in terms of our routing. Even if, in theory, like, there's an optimal route, maybe, like, skip this gem here to take a better racing line, um, it causes problems later on down the line in Jock, especially once we start considering it's a single segment run performed by a human who, who, who is going to miss like a couple gems here and there. That just is what it is. Beautiful uh, uh, jump charges there. I love that little section right there because it really kind of shows how cracked out a player is. You know, it's like how fast are you kind of mashing that circle or that, that uh, cross and square button. Let's see what Ash is saying here. I'm going to actually scoot it back. Though. What's up? Thank you. I'm gonna scoot it back just to hear this. Yo, Dipto, what's up? Oh, you're just saying hi to people. Singing along, I love that shit. Sing it. There's something really um, cathartic about singing singing along. Um, I mean, Ash is listening to their own music, but um, you know. Like just singing along while playing, it's something about it, it like clears your mind, I think. Having a clear mind, I think is really important in speed running. Um, it's easy to get like, you know, I was, I was like listening for, okay, 
what's Ash saying about the run here? But think about how much that kind of muddies up like your headspace to be thinking about your pace and, okay, well, that wasn't so fast. If Ash should have been like, oh, fuck, we lost a little time in that night flight and then, well, hold on, we can recover it here. You can see how that kind of incurs a lot of stress, which can have implications on your gameplay. So really great, uh, like peace of mind, I would say from Ash here. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. And I think it's no, in no small part helps with the execution of this run. Ash talking up the magic crafters. Let's see how it goes. Hmm. Yeah, these routes are taking me back, man. Again, the last time I touched this category was in like uh, early 2021, I believe. It's crazy to think it's been two years, man, and now we're finally here where we're finally optimizing this category. It really does, it really makes me proud to see. And from Laura as well, big shouts to Laura. Laura actually beat my record first, and it could possibly beat this run as well. Asha and Laura, from what I understand, are not done with this category yet. I think both of them are um, fully capable of getting a 37.3x. And possibly even lower, though that is that is yet to be seen. We're starting to get into the realm of like theoretical, you know, time save at that point. But hey, nothing's impossible. I'll just say that much. Yeah, just nice, real solid movement here. I will say, like you know, I'm I'm very used to playing and watching this game. I just got done with a. Uh, with like a three hour, three, four hour grind in this game. And I gotta say, Ash's general movement here is very solid. It's like solid movement. And what I mean by solid movement is that it's not being pushed too hard. In this game, it is possible to play too fast uh, to, the, to the point where you're like missing gems that you think you should have got and you're getting a lot of unnecessary bonks when you try to do inputs too quickly. So Ash has a really nice presence of uh, like, so like solidness in their gameplay. Uh, which is really what leads you to the best runs, like, in truth, you know? It's not about just getting the most optimal, like, fast thing. It's about just playing solidly to avoid losing time. It's not about always just saving the most time. It's about optimally not losing time in this game. A lot of people seem, a lot of people are, are kind of not, so if you don't play this game a lot, it's, it's hard to really understand that, but it, this game really, it, it's a big deal that you just play solidly, not too, not hastily. And that is definitely the case here with Ash's gameplay. Yeah, having a solid type of gameplay is like is a good foundation to start doing little bits of, of hasty gameplay. But you don't want to do one before the other. Or do the hasty before the solid. Now look at all these beautiful gems here. I mean, just gorgeous. I mean, it's just solid. I mean, like, even for me, I'm watching this and it just looks mistakeless. It looks gorgeous. Looks beautiful. Oh, nice. a full hop there, nice. So, you know, you can do a charge, Ash certainly knows this, that you can do a charge jump there, but that's at the cost of racing lines. So it's really not that much of a time difference, if we're being honest. Um, also, this uh, jump can be done more than one way, though I think most people tend to do it this way, the way Ash does it. Uh, so, and I think it with, in the case of any percent, it makes more sense to do it this way, rather than the way I do it in my 120 runs. Routing wise, I think it makes more sense the way I do it in 120. And the way Ash does it here, it makes more sense in any percent, I think. Nice, nice jump charge there. So one other thing, as like a more keenly experienced player that I look for in general movement, by the way, to get into that portal from the supercharge, it is, try it yourself, it is really hard not to bonk on the top of that portal. Ash charges in a very specific way to not, you'll notice that they did like a kind of a wider charge there. That was the reasoning for that. And nice, catching this guy like early. It's not like hard to do, but it does look cool. <laughs> you know, in all, in all fairness. Missing a blue from that guy. So I'm trying to catch like whenever a gem is missed, you know, type of thing, because that is something that Ash is like honing in on for sure in their head. Watch Laura's run. It's better. Whoa. You talking movement wise or like ex if you wouldn't mind extrapolating on that or unless it's just a joke. Because it, that definitely is a real feeling in this category, because when I got my record, it was very much like, oh, well, Chris's run is, is better execution wise. You just I just got rat proxy at the end. I got the trick at the end. So I save more time, you know, so that that's a very real like the imposter syndrome is real in this category. 
Nice thief skip there. I love that. L I love that uh, death abuse right there. Hitting the thief and skipping the animation by falling out of bounds. It's, it's very nice. Hexus is a funny dragon to hit in, in any percent because, um, because like ideally you want to get him like as far to the right as you can. So it's easy to just miss him and just go all the way past when you're really trying to optimize him. Again, you can see Ash isn't trying to over optimize things like that. Ton of like every second there's like little things like that. Another mist blue there. Um, there's a lot of like little over optimizations that can uh, lead you down, lead you astray that if you just play solidly and try not to go too quick, um, you can save yourself from. God damn, I have banana on my glasses. <laughs> How many subs to watch yours? Um, I can watch yours at some point. I was thinking about watching like when you get another PB, I'll watch that. Uh, Laura already has a, Laura's record, um, or I guess former, uh, PB is the word. <laughs> I was like, what's the word? Um, Laura's um, PB in this category, which is also amazing and faster than my former record. Um, it has a full commentated version on YouTube, so I don't personally feel the need to throw my dick in the pile there. But something tells me it won't be her last PB in this category, and uh, possibly not the same for Ash either. What's up, Duriel? Welcome, welcome. And yeah, once again, if you're just tuning in, um, Ash was listening to music on this run, uh, and so there is no game sound, so... Uh, I do see that Ash is talking here a little, so I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. And see what see what they were saying. You save a bunch of time for touching Lucas at the correct spot. Oh, talking about a uh, dragon skip. Um, worth, so I did not mention this. Oh no, he's talking about Lucas. Which one's Lucas? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> You'd think I'd know. Is Lucas the one in Wizard Peak, like at the yeah, end? Jay, thanks for the gift. Is that Lucas? Uh, or is that or am I thinking Dragon Skip? Wizard Peak. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking of the right one. Yeah. So. At the end of Wizard Peak, you know, it's really awkward because in pretty much any percent and 120 percent, you have to collect a 25 gem, which is behind the dragon. You know, you have to do an awkward flame charge to get this 25 gem, and then you are literally on the wrong side of the dragon. So it saves time to spend a second and a half to touch the dragon on the right spot to resave the second from uh, from uh, walking around. It's it's kind of like a it's kind of like a bunch of like okay, do this, lose time, then do this to save the time back type of thing. Pretty funny how that dragon is. Lucas is is, parti is particularly annoying when it comes to touching him in the right spot. Yeah, and it's hard, you know, Laura points this out, like getting the actual proper angle is different than just doing it well. Getting it perfect, like saves additional time. Like you can be, you can get really like pedantic with the dragon, ang the dragon touch optimization in this game, believe it or not. Which, again, I was mentioning this earlier with Hexus in Wizard Peak uh, after the supercharge. If you were to be really, like, over-optimal about it, it'd be very easy to charge past Hexus by trying to over-optimize the dragon touch. There's another example of going around a dragon and then rolling to touch them in the right spot, so. If you didn't know, now you know. Beautiful. I, and I just love this section of Blowhard. There's just so many juicy blues and, and golds. You know, a, a category like this really makes you appreciate uh, the larger value gems that are sort of scattered about and sort of the kind of uh, the, I guess, the, the level design of the game in terms of gem placement. Um, I kind of touched on this in my red spring chest video, but uh, the gem placement in this game, got so many yellows and purples, just mwah, love it. In 120%, it's like, I don't care, I just collect everything. Like, everything's equally valuable to me. But in a category like this, it's like, you really appreciate it. Um, or like, for example, in my gem um, randomizer mod that I played, uh, it's not my mod, but like a, a mod that I played uh, in my last video, uh, I was really taking the time to appreciate the juicier gems. Uh, let's see what Ash is saying here. Yeah, we're only four <laughs> seconds off best pace here. That must have been an obscenely good magic crafter. Yeah. Because the peacekeeper's time was like bad. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look at what uh, magic crafter's uh, segment time was. No. So yeah, commenting on all the same things that we kind of we were touching on, that it wasn't really the greatest peacekeepers, but it got well more than made up for with that Magic Crafters. Dorito. Dorito is the name of the rat that we do on Rat Proxy at the end. Beautiful, uh, beautiful damage abuse there. Uh, Spyro, in case you don't know, Spyro does have invincibility after taking damage, so that's why we take the damage in the lava there, so we can crash it, so we can, like, hit the firework chests faster by charging into them without taking more than one damage. 
Now th there's okay. Now here's like here's like a optimization kind of argument here. I'll, I'll go ahead and, and and push this back a little. Say. Ash already knows what I'm about to say here, but entering wild flight, go in the top or go in the bottom. It's hard to say which one is faster. I actually I don't think anyone's timed it, but from what I've seen, like most of the fa this is just for me and my experience. I haven't timed it, so I can't tell you for sure. But it seemed to me that Saboom and Chris, back when I was learning like the way to do these strats in 120, um, would go actually keep charging all the way to the bottom of that uh, of that um, portal. And the benefit of doing that actually isn't necessarily that in itself it's faster, but it gives you the opportunity to make the camera and do a quick touch on the portal. And um, if you're familiar with like the toasty skip, like where you do uh, the wall glide, you do the wall glide in Artisans to get into toasty from behind. Um, there's a way to make the camera touch um, the portal at the same time uh, Spyro touches it and a similar thing happens when you hit the exact 90 degree angle of the bottom of um, Of wild flight you get sort of a fast load um, On the level so I think that just that alone even if in itself It's not necessarily like faster or slower. I think that in itself that opportunity uh, Potential optimization there. I think makes it worth it to go for the bottom rather than the top But you know just a game theory. I, I haven't timed it myself, so I can't say for sure. Wow, Laura, just throwing absolute shade. 120 sucks. You're sounding like potty right now. <laughs> You're sounding like potty on Twitter. Ugh, Spiral 1 is the worst Sprash game. So boring. <laughs> but yes, this is an any percent speed run right now. And by the way, you'll notice down below here, this was Ash's 30th birthday. Ash the fucking legend streaming on their birthday. So fucking badass, like, what a cool birthday present to get like the world record on your birthday. That's, that's just special, you know? Ash saying some, uh... Ash singing along, dude, Ash in the zone! You know what I'm saying? Like, you guys have to be able to see that, you know? That like, that singing along, it, there's something special about it. I can't put my finger on it, but it, you, something about being in the zone, dude. Like, I know, call me fucking like, you know, it's, this isn't no like fucking theoretical, logical reasoning here, but it's just like, there's something about just like singing along to a song that just clears your head, which is so helpful in speedrunning. I do it all the time with the in-game music in this game. Especially, especially when I say, this is a funny thing, you can, you can notice me doing this. I've noticed myself doing this. If I ever say something awkward on stream or I have like an awkward interaction with someone in chat, um, I'll start singing music right after that to try to, it, as a subconscious way of forgetting it. Like, I don't even realize that I do that, but I do that. I've seen other runners do it too. Now, this is definitely a section where you can gain and lose a lot of gems. As you can see, a couple of those frogs, at least one of those frogs did not uh, go into uh, Ash that quickly. But with that said, Ash still got a lot of those flame charges. So I would call that actually probably above average gem collection. Not optimal, obviously, but pretty pretty good actually for how badly those enemies can be kind of laid out sometimes. My BRB mixtape? Well, it's just right here. You can just uh, check it out. There it is. There's the link in the chat. Or if it will pop up. Doesn't look like it. Or maybe it's this. Playlist. There it is. And let me scroll up to see uh, what's going on here. By the way, this is a cool strat here. Moving the, the flame over and then doing a... You can actually do a charge jump, um, like a magic stare to get over that. That's what a... Uh, that's the Chris and Saboom strats there. Uh, but let me see what this says. Slothfulness. My buddy starts singing after he gets roasted because he doesn't have a response. Yeah, it's similar. It's something about it clears the, the soul. You know, just kind of, you know, just lightly singing along. <laughs> Clears the mind, clears the soul. Whatever you experienced before or after that doesn't, you know. Like it's just clear, clear mind. No empty head, no thoughts, only gaming. I think it's a beautiful thing, personally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad we're in agreement with that. Getting the last of these gems here. I hear Guantan, what? You heard incorrectly. I hear Guantan was good in this run. That Guantan wasn't bad. Hold on, let's watch it. I, I wasn't paying super close attention on it. This was a bad Guantan, you're saying? Let me see.
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, not like horrible, but. Yeah, I hear you. It's fine. It's like a second or two. You know? Oh, turn around for a gem. Oh, boo fucking who. It's like a second or two, right? Like. It's easy. I'm going to say this. It's easy in this game to get it like uh, discombobulated, like what's actually good and what's bad, you know? Because that looked bad. I'll say that that looked bad, but it only lost like a second or two, you know? It wasn't that big of a time loss. Um, no dream. Thank you for the gift. Appreciate it. No, I know it's banter, but it, it, it raises an interesting point. I mean, it's it gets right down to like, well, we think everything we do is bad, you know, in, in speedrunning. Sorry for making a serious point out of your joke, but I'm gonna fucking do it because it's my stream. Fuck you. Um, I, I think, um, what was I saying? I don't even care anymore. Fuck you, Laura. <laughs> what do you think, how's that for banter? You're a bitch. You wanna fucking make jokes? I'll make a serious point out of, out of your jokes. Nice jump here. Laura made a whole short about like uh, all the different ways you can get to this island. It's pretty cool cool short let me get the fucking player out of here there's like three different ways you can do it or actually i mean technically more than three i mean if you count all the different casual style routes i guess technically like four or five you know different ways to reach that island pretty cool Now it is possible to hit that red thief early, which actually most runners used to do a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to see that runners nowadays don't necessarily try to go for it. It makes way more sense to optimize the racing line um, initially to the, uh, to, the, to the thief, which you know causes the early kill to not be possible um, in exchange for, uh, for killing the red thief later, which loses almost no time. Full hop here. Um, I've opted personally to do a uh, charge jump uh, it doesn't get you as much speed. Um, it doesn't get you as much speed on the supercharge, but I feel like it, it's it's a, it's like the net fastest thing. I don't know. It's hard to say, really, actually, because if you don't know this, you know, to those of you watching, if you if you full hop charge out of the air onto the top of the supercharge ramp, you'll get more speed from that. Uh, so there's like kind of a delicate sort of like game that you're playing, a little a little mini game that you're playing in treetops with how you how you manipulate supercharge speed. Like, are you going to do a full hop? Take that extra half second to do the full hop on there, and then not jump off the edge of the end of the ramp. Or you know, in my case with that last one, you can do a charge jump and not jump off the edge, which is that's what I do, and I find that to be the fastest. Almost okay. This is a big strat right here. So as you can see, Ash tries to hit the guy and get in the corner there, which would send uh, send them out of bounds. Um, but uh, that strat didn't work. So as you can see, there was a bit of a like a what five ish second time loss from that five to eight seconds. And any percent, it's a little bit rougher than in one twenty percent to miss this. It's it's more of an objectively like loss of time, I guess you could say. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, that's, in my opinion, that's like been the biggest time loss of the run so far. That and a couple of missed gems, but it's really not that. This run obviously is very clean so far. You know, if that's like the biggest time loss, that's like, pff, that's nothing, you know? Fangmaster, thank you for the sub. Appreciate that. You know, we can definitely see that, like, uh, this run, you know, there is room to improve on. It's not, like, perfect. We're not, we're not at, like, the human limit of this category yet or anything. But, damn, for what it's worth, like, if the, I'm I'm struggling to nitpick things that are wrong with this run, you know? And that's that tells you a lot about how far this game has come as a speedrun. It's like, we've come so far and there's still such a long way to go. Which I think is just exciting. I think that's cool. As a nerd <laughs> for this game. <laughs> Skeep. The rest of the I forgot that we do the rest of the metalhead fight. I, I don't know why I thought in my head that we like uh, exit the level after the uh, treasure treasure chest. Yeah, you'll notice there is a lot of like empty space running in this level where it's like, dude, you know, you'd think like go to a level where there's more closely like um, grouped gems, but you can see there are there are a lot of closely grouped high value gems in this level. In fact, this level has some of the most gems in the entire game. It's one of the few 500 uh, gem levels. Um, and Ash gets a good chunk of them here. It, likely, uh, part of that also, recovering for a couple of the gems lost earlier. So I think at this point, Ash 
is probably on like on a favorable gem count now i would assume if laura wants to laura or ash want to correct me on that feel free i again i forgot what the correct gem counts should be like exiting metalhead exiting metalhead is an important one to check the gem count Yeah, so we're pl we're plus on the gem count is what Laura's saying. We have more gems than we need, which allows us to go faster in Jock, basically. It's not a bad thing that we have more gems than we need. It's actually a good thing. If we have more gems than we need and we're on a good pace, that means we're going to save even more time in Jock, ideally. Or And even now, like especially at this point coming out of Metalhead, it's so clutch to know the exact like how much ahead or behind because now Ash can skip like the, the plus 10 chest over here which they opt not to do, which actually makes sense because then again, you're allowing for more time saving Jock. So there's a lot of, at this point, it's all trade-offs with, with the, the gems being grabbed. Ash is keenly aware that they're like just over gem just by a bit, I would imagine. And um, they're opting to keep that over gem and, and keep that into Jock rather than try to correct it and then do like another route in Jock. It's not to say that, that this way is faster or another way is faster, it's just, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a choice, you know? It's, it's really interesting how just the end game routing kind of goes in this game, especially for this chunk from Metalhead um, to the end of Jock. There's a lot of like um, micro, there's a lot of adjustment in the gem grabbing uh, at this point in the run. That varies from player to player. And so Ash, you know, being more, we can see that Ash as a player leans more on the over gem to side uh, at this point, you know? This is where you could really see a lot of like, Decision making, I guess you could say, as an any percent player. But yeah, this is just wild. This is just a uh, icy flight right now. And again, it's like there are so many gems that you get by collecting all of the uh, collectibles in these levels that it makes it worth it to spend the whatever minute and a half it takes to do it. Any tips for a new runner for any speedrun category? Um, if you haven't picked a category yet, um, I would say uh, just, you know, this is going to sound really, really basic, but first play through the game casually. If you haven't done that recently, just do whatever run you're thinking of, play through it casually. You don't even have to know the route or anything. Cool that they went on top of the, uh, of the, of the landmass there. I, I always used to, uh, right here, I always used to just jump off like, yeah, yeah, I would take like a tighter line there, but glide for longer. So interesting that Ash opted to, to sacrifice the racing line for less glide time. Hard to say whether that's faster or slower, but it's just like a micro thing, you know? These are like the little things that us spiral runners look at when we watch other runners, you know? It's like that, the difference between those two things is like less than a second, obviously, but you know, it's, it's interesting to me. Who like learned it another way, right? And so, okay, so we can see now here, this is really important stuff. Before I get to the new runner advice, I'll, I'll give that at the end of the run, but, um, Right here, we can see, I'm gonna watch from the start of this level. Because if you're really under gemmed, you can turn around and grab the, the metal chests there. I think those have like blues in them, but Ash doesn't have to do that. And also you can go, uh, let me scoot this back a little bit. You can go to those guys at the, at the right, on the right there on those floating platforms. And they have a lot of gems as well. Like in that whole area, you can easily get like 20-ish gems. Um, at sacrificing around like five seconds. But since Ash is over gemmed, Ash gets to save those five-ish seconds by just kind of turning around early. You do have to turn around there either way. So that's where some of that time save I was saying in Jock was. If, if Ash was under gemmed, they, they would already be losing like five-ish at least seconds here. Possibly more. Ash going for double cake right there. That uh, those, the, those platforms that uh, they lifted, um, the platforms that Ash lifted are, uh, you can do it with just one cake. We call it like the birthday cake, like jumps, right? Single cake or double, Ash went for double. It's a two second time loss. Ish, you know, again, all comes down to execution, right? No nothing's like explicitly, you know, a time loss or time save. Ash hopping not to go for uh, charge jumps here and then uh, full hops into the, into the uh, whirlwinds. That does lose a couple seconds as well, but um, I think, I think, you know what, I respect it just in terms of the fact that like at this point, Ash knows that they're on a good pace. Let's see what they're, let's see what they're saying right now. They would just want to play solidly, you know, and I 100% I, I uh, respect that. No, not exactly 6,000 anymore. It's cringe. 
Yeah, it is kind of, it's like you want to have exactly 6,000 just for the satisfaction. Ash accidentally grabbing an extra red there from that annoying bonk that happens. Hold on, what are they saying? Hold on, go back, go back. I want to see what they said. Exactly 6,000 anymore. It's just unnecessary, but it's, it's aesthetics. 3611. 3611, really good. Especially considering this is like a 1253 peacekeepers or something. Still, that's still remembering that peacekeepers. It wasn't that bad. It was just you missed the box, and that was it. And like a gem, couple gems maybe. It wasn't like awful. Still got three out of three tricks, right? Ooh, this can go in. Okay, let's hear the reaction here. This is a big trick. This trick goes has gone wrong 50 good runs, and there Ash gets it. Doesn't fall off. This is that's the most nerve wracking part. And now Ash is hyped. Fuck. If I remember correctly, dude, this could be it. This could be it. Just don't fuck up. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it down. Um, if I remember correctly, Ash said that they got 50 paces equivalent to this, like really good runs, which we are about 36 minutes in right now, um, almost 37 minutes in. Think about that. Of all the attempts that someone does in a day. Like, you may not even get a pace like this that's in the low 36s coming out of Dreamweavers or even even close to sub 36 coming out of Dreamweavers. So, of the, of the days where Ash was able to get low 36 Dreamweavers, I believe it was, it, it says right here, they got the, it was their 53rd run that had a low 36 Dreamweavers, basically, that actually succeeded in the Rat Proxy in the home world of Nasty's home world. So, that translates to, like, months and months of attempts, you know? Because again, you may not get like a fucking run, you know, hold on, let's hear the reaction here. Just to be able to put it in perspective for you guys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> fucking yes. <laughs> oh, so wholesome. Oh my God. <laughs> so wholesome, this is a wholesome pop-off. My pop-offs are way more like, yeah, they're way more jockey. These are, these are, this is wholesome. I can't believe that, dude. <laughs> the fucking birthday. <laughs> the, the, fucking birthday. <laughs> the anime girl. Ash has always had this anime girl here. <laughs> Two days in a row. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Well, I, I'll spare you guys the whole pop off here, but, uh, you know, please check out Ash's actual channel, uh, which I'm going to have linked below. But yeah, this run was extreme. If I were to just put like a, a word to describe this run is just very solid. Every run that's under that 38, that's a sub 38 in this game is very solid. And just so you guys can see the end time here, 3746 right there. That is um, compared to Laura's recent uh, record at the time, I believe that is uh 10 ish seconds faster and like 12 or 13 seconds faster than my uh my previous record so huge absolutely huge run um definitely time still to be saved um as i mentioned uh laura and ash i still I, i'm pretty sure they're still going for the mid 37 the 37 3x and frankly i think it could even go maybe a little lower maybe but for what it's worth for a human to put down a run that's this solid that only has had like Let's be honest, there were only like th two or three like noticeable mistakes in this run. Um, there was the chest in, uh, you know, not to harp on it, but to make a point of how solid this run was. Um, there was the chest in uh, in Night Flight, there was the Out of Bounds in Metalhead, and there were a couple missed gems here or there that had to be recovered, I remember, in, in Ice Cavern uh, particularly. So basically, uh, this uh, this run's fucking really good, dude. This run's sick. Um, I challenge any human to play a game like this with with as few mistakes as that and still close it out with a trick that is like a one in 100 basically at the end with that rap proxy that you could go months without getting as Ash did feels extra cathartic when you know when that's the case I remember that being the case for me when I got my first rap proxy PB I was like holy shit you know and then like trying to push it beyond that it's like can this it will this even happen you start asking yourself these questions like can this even happen like and the answer is, if you just never give up, then yes. Like, this is totally, this category is a perfect example. You just never give up, and you will, like, keep bringing it lower and lower. But there is still, there is still time to go. This, this run is impressive. It's very solid. Um, and Ash is amazing. I mean, I was waiting to make a video about Ash, actually. Because if you guys have been watching my YouTube for a while, you guys know I talk a big game about Laura. And Laura's coming to take my any percent record. But in the background... There has been Ash grinding the entire time. And mind you, coming off of a really high level Vortex grind for like the whole year before that. 
So Ash is is like absolutely no slouch. In a lot of ways, Ash has like has a real leg up on myself and Laura uh, in terms of their general game experience across the different uh, categories of this game. Uh, whereas Laura and I are more specialized with our categories of choice. Ash definitely has like the, I would say the broadest experience across across the various categories. So it's just a really impressive thing to see. And I, I have nothing else to say. Ash is a fucking legend. Fucking femboy hypers in the chat, dude. God damn. Fucking cutest fucking world record I've ever seen. Wholesome pop off, and that's that's about it. You know, and it, it brings a smile to my, a, a tear to my eye. A, fucking, I'm about to finna finna bust a bust a tear right now, bust a nut. <laughs> you know, so yeah, wholesome world record. And hey, if you enjoyed this reaction, let me know in the comments down below if you want to see me react to another, hopefully another any percent record coming soon. You can see Ash is still reeling up here. It is a feeling unlike any other to achieve a run like this after months, years of hard work. Um, and this is why we do it, you know? It's just for, for these moments. It's like a, it's a strike going for the wall glide around the whole thing. I believe Ash actually did accomplish that wall glide around the whole thing without uh, without taking damage. Another Another amazing accolade by them. But yeah, uh, follow Ash down below. Follow me. Fucking follow. Uh, follow your mom. Call. Text your mom this. <laughs> you know. And that's about it from me, guys. I'm Deo Man, and I will catch you guys in the next world record. I'll see you then, Chuggers, in the chat. Deo.